Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to plug values into a formula and solve for a specified variable. So oftentimes when we're in a science class or we're in a math class or we're in an economics class, any class that deals with formulas, we are given values for certain variables and we're asked to plug them into a given formula. So I just came up with a formula that involves a lot of variables so that you can see how to plug values in and then simplify and solve for the variable that you are looking for. So the formula that I have here is just something I made up. If it corresponds to something else, that's just coincidence, but it is um, just a formula where I came up with multiple variables. So what we have is a times b times the quantity x minus y plus c times d times the quantity of x minus z equals zero. And I'm going to go through a couple of scenarios where we solve for two different variables. The first one we're going to solve for y, and in the second example we're going to solve for x. So the formula, like I said, that we have, we're just going to take and plug in all of our variables that are given in where they correspond. So um, for the first one, what we have is we're going to solve for y if a equals 6. So that means I'm going to take and I'm going to replace this a with 6. Okay. Um, and then anytime two variables are next to each other, that just means multiplying. So I'm going to multiply that times my b term, where b is 3. And then I'm going to start plugging things into parentheses. x, we are told, is 8. Minus my y term, that's what we're solving for, that's our unknown. So since we're solving for y, we would just keep it as y. And then we would continue plugging in c is 9, so we would have plus 9, times my d term, so my d term for this one is 2. And then again, we already found that x was 8, so I'm going to plug in 8. And then we will subtract our z term, so minus our z term, and we are told that z is 4. And this is all going to be equal to 0. So now what we want to do is we just want to get y by itself. So remember our goal is to isolate this y term right here. So the first thing that we want to do is look for any groups that we might have that we need to simplify um, and start there. So this 6 times 3 is grouped together. I know that the 8 minus y is in the parentheses, but I want to simplify this part on the outside first, and then I'm going to have to distribute in because I can't actually add the 8 and the y together because they're different terms. So 6 times 3 is 18 times 8 minus y. This second part over here does not depend on what we did over there, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify this part too. I'm going to multiply the 9 times 2, keep this as plus, so 9 times 2 is 18. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify what's inside here, because I can actually simplify this 8 minus 4, which would give me 4. Okay, um, so basically these are grouped together on the outside, this is grouped together on the inside, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify those first. So now what we need to do is, because again I cannot simplify the 8 and the y, this 18 pertains to everything inside, so I do need to distribute it in by multiplying. So 18 times 8 gives us 144 minus 18y, and then I'm going to add to that 18 times 4. So 18 times 4 gives me 72 equals 0. And from there, again, our goal is to get y by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and combine any like terms that I have. So I'm going to add the 144 and the 72, which gives me 216. I could, because the y doesn't um, influence the constants at all. I could move it in one step to the other side, but I'm just going to do one step at a time. If you're good at this, you can start skipping steps. I'm going to move the negative 18y to the opposite side so that I can get my y term by itself. I could move the 216 to the opposite side as well, but then I have to deal with negatives, and it's always um, easier if I can deal with positives. So I'm going to have 216 equals 18y, and then divide both sides by 18 and I end up with y equals 12. Okay, so 
um, we found that y ends up being 12. So we can check to make sure that this makes sense in the original um, equation. So if we go back up here and we replace it in, 8 minus 12 would give me negative 4. Negative 4 times the positive 18 would give me a negative 72. So this expression right here would be negative 72 plus 72 does give me 0. Um, if it helps, you can always check it in a calculator, or you can also write out the work to plug it back in, but this does end up giving me 0. All right, so let's look at another one where we have to find a different variable this time. So again, let me write the formula down. We have a times b times x minus y plus c times d times the equation or the expression x minus c equals zero. So let's go ahead and plug in our values that we're given. We're gonna replace a with two. And again, remember, since it's a times b, you can write it as multiplication, you can put it as a parenthesis. There's a lot of different ways of writing multiplication. So b is going to be 10. x is our unknown. That's what we're trying to find. So I'm going to just leave it as x minus my y term. So for this one, they told us that y is 4. Plus my c term, which is 8 times my d term, which is 5. x, again, we don't know what that is, so I'm just going to write x minus, and then we would plug in our z term, so z is 1. And all of this is going to equal 0. So again, all we have to do is simplify. This time we do have two variable terms, so um, x was constant in both of those so this time we will have to do some combining of like terms okay so we simplify this 2 times 10 would give us 20 x minus 4 i can't simplify the x minus 4 since they're not like terms 8 times 5 would end up giving me 40 and again, I can't simplify the x minus 1 equals 0. So we are going to have to use the distributive property twice. So I have 20 times x minus 20 times 4, which ends up giving me 80. Plus, we have 40 times x minus 40 times 1, which is 40. And we're going to figure out what would make x true in order for this to be 0. So now we want to add our like terms. I have 20x and 40x. So if I add 20 plus 40, that gives me 60x. And then we're going to add our constant terms. So I would take the negative 80 and the negative 40. Since they are the same, same means sum and keep the sign. So 80 plus 40 would give me 120. Since they are both negative, I would keep it as subtraction equals zero. And now at this point, you have the choice of bringing the 60x to the right side or bringing the negative 120. I would take this because it's negative, so I would take the negative 120 and move it to the other side by adding it. So the opposite of subtracting is adding, so I can say that 60x equals positive 120. Um, 0 plus 120 just gives me 120, and then we would divide. So if I divide both sides by 60, we end up with x equals 2. And again, you can plug this back into your original equation. If I just go back up here, um, 2 minus 4 would give me negative 2. Negative 2 times 20 would give me negative 40. And over here, if I simplify, I have 40. Um, and I should probably write this down so you can see what I'm doing. So if I take 20 times 2 minus 4 plus 40 times 2 minus 1, we can ask ourselves, does this equal 0? And we can see easily that it does. This would give me negative 2, which would give me negative 40. Plus 2 minus 1 gives me 1 times 40. And if I take negative 40 and add it to 40, I do get 0. Okay. Um, sometimes you will not have as nice answers when you are working this. It is okay to end up with decimals and zeros. I find that when students end up with things that are not exact, they sometimes panic. But that is okay when you're working with formulas. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.